Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about tomatoes. We'd like to thank Amanda Garrison for liking and sharing the podcast. Research from the Harvard University of Public Health said that eating tomatoes, ketchup, tomato paste, and sauce can reduce your risk of prostate cancer from 20 to 40%. Wow. And it also helps reduce breast and lung cancer. Mm. And the key nutrient in tomatoes is lycopene. And if you cook tomatoes in oil, you actually absorb more of this chemical. And tomato sauce is considered one of the best sources of lycopene. Interesting. Some organic ketchup has three times the lycopene than a standard ketchup. Hmm. <laughs> and then agriculture research services said look for the darkest red ketchup that's going to have your highest source. 90% of homes with a garden grow tomatoes. Wow. You know what the heaviest tomato was? No. Seven pounds, 12 ounces. Wow. That's and, like a baby. And the, and the largest tomato plant in the world is at Walt Disney World Resort. And they produce <laughs> thousands of golf ball sized tomatoes and they serve it throughout the restaurants. Really? <laughs> you know what you know where this is grown though? No. It's in their experimental greenhouse. Mm. Which which sounds ominous. It does. <laughs> but it's Walt Disney. Right, so it's gotta be good. <laughs> so tomatoes could come in a wide variety of colors and sizes. You can get orange, yellow, pink, purple, white. They even have black tomatoes, which <laughs> they, right. <laughs> they, they start out green, and then as they ripen, they turn black, which is pretty wild. There's striped tomatoes. Who's that, the first person that ate a black tomato? You watch something that goes from green to black. Yeah, it usually is rotting when it, tur- <laughs> when it, when it turns black. A pretty cool tomato is the Emmy, and this is from Transylvania. <laughs> and did you know that you're really supposed to keep your tomatoes at room temperature? It, the flavor and the texture actually suffer when it's chilled in the refrigerator. Didn't we talk about that in the refrigerator episode? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Which I still have tomatoes in my refrigerator. <laughs> I should pay attention to what we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> If you're just starting to grow tomatoes, you should actually grab a few variety and see how they grow and what they taste like. Mm -hmm. Cherry and grape tomatoes are high in sugar, so they taste sweet. That Emmy from Transylvania, they say it has a very intense flavor. And then there's a couple purple tomatoes that they say almost taste smoky. The black crim, this is a brown tomato, they say it has a salty taste. So there's really a variety in the flavors. Interesting. When you're looking at tomatoes, you're going to see heirloom and hybrid. Mm -hmm. So heirloom tomatoes were developed over many generations. And this is open pollination. These seeds have been passed down from generation to generation. Like there's a variety called Nebraska Wedding. This is an orange tomato. And these seeds have been handed down to brides on their wedding day. It's kind of a a regional tomato. And people like the heirlooms because there's a history behind it, where where it's come from, the taste and the variety. And it changes over time, whereas hybrid, these tomatoes are forced pollination. Mm -hmm. And so it's creating specific qualities like disease resistance, tolerance to cold, or the fruit size and texture. Interesting. There's also indeterminate and determinate tomatoes. Indeterminate tomatoes are a vine style, and these are going to continue to grow throughout the growing season. So they're going to produce fruit randomly and steadily all summer. Indeterminate plants need tomato cages and stakes. They need support for all this fruit. And these work really well in hanging pots. They're generally going to be five feet and taller. Wow. And then determinate tomatoes, this is a bush style. And these grow to a determined size, and they produce all their fruit in a very short window, usually about two weeks. <laughs> wow. They're mainly smaller plants. Some of them don't need cages, but it helps to always have support for the right. fruit. If you want a large amount of tomatoes all at once, like for canning, for sauces, then <laughs> and you don't want to do work all summer, yeah. then you would get this determinate style. You can start tomatoes from seeds or seedlings. If you plan on growing in containers, you want to look for a variety that's designed for containers. And so they're going to be marked either dwarf, container, or patio. Uh-huh. The bigger the pot, the better, the healthier it's going to be. Minimum size is kind of visualize a five-gallon bucket. That's what you're looking for for a tomato plant. You want Mm -hmm. it 12 to 18 inches deep. And if you're growing in a garden, most pros recommend if you're, you know, trying to decide how many plants should I have, you'd want about two to four plants per person. Wow. 
When you're picking your seed packets or your seedlings, look at the package and label. If it's disease resistant, which makes growing tomatoes a lot easier, right. you're going to see a letter after the variety. So you'll see a V, an F, an N, a T, or an A. And if you see a variety with V, F, T, N after the name, it's resistant to four different diseases. Hmm. So it just makes it easier to grow tomatoes. So it's not like a typo on the label? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> A couple of the top rated varieties for a slicer tomato, so this is good on salads and on sandwiches. Mm -hmm. A lot of the pros, they love this brandy wine. It's B-R-A-N-D-Y-W-I-N-E, all one word. Uh -huh. Early girl and beefsteak tomatoes were considered some of the most flavorful. <laughs> In cherry tomatoes, so a very sweet tomato, there's something called super sweet Sun Gold and Black Cherry. Those three were rated very high. And then if you're looking for tomatoes for canning or for tomato paste, Roma and Amish Paste hmm. were both rated very high. And then on your package or on your label, you're going to have a, an amount of days, and that's the time to maturity. Mm -hmm. And it's usually going to be anywhere from 60 to 90 days. Which is kind of important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's wild how long it takes yeah. before you get your first tomatoes. If you're starting your tomatoes from seeds, you want to start your seeds about six weeks before the last frost in your area, and you're going to be starting these inside. You can get these seed trays or cubes, mm -hmm. so it almost looks like an ice cube tray. Right. And you're going to use potting mix rather than soil. And you want to sow these seeds about a half inch deep, two seeds per cube, hmm. and keep this potting mix moist till they sprout. You don't want to saturate them, but they need to be moist. Right. As the seeds germinate and the roots start to develop, if they dry out, they die. You want to keep them in a warm place around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And at your first sprouts, once they start coming up, you want to get them under bright light, get them in a bright window. You can get grow lights that will mm -hmm. really help them beef up. And when the seedlings get to about two inches tall, you want to keep the healthiest looking plant in each cell. So most pros recommend that you cut out the weak one and keep <laughs> the healthier one in each cube. Survival of the fit. There you fittest. go. And now you start giving them a little bit of fertilizer designed for seedlings. And one of the top rated were worm castings. Hmm. They're very gentle on seedlings. And then after about a month, you want to transfer these into bigger pots, about a four-inch pot. Mm -hmm. You can either use cheap plastic or biodegradable pots. And they've got a, a whole line called cow pots, so C-O-W. And this is made from composted manure. Oh. And then it disintegrates when you plant it into the soil. That's kind of gross. <laughs> and then you got your manure there. Yeah, it's still kind of gross. <laughs> you can also get peat pots, so P-E-A-T. Right. And this is, you know, recycled newspaper, wood pulp, and peat. Huh. I read a research study done by Cornell University that they took these tomato seedlings and they brushed them with their hands a couple of times a day when they got to about two inches, three inches tall, mm -hmm. that it made them healthier. It toughened them up. Their, th their stems got thicker. Huh. And then another research study said that they used a fan on seedlings, and they said that the plants were healthier just from a little <laughs> bit of stimulation, a little bit of movement. It kind of toughened them up. Mm -hmm. And then to further toughen them up, you can put your seedlings outside. So once they're, it's about two or three weeks before the last frost in your area, this is called hardening off. So you slowly expose your plant to outdoor temperatures for a couple hours each day, and that makes much healthier plants. So you take them for a walk? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> now, when you're ready to plant your seedlings, or if you decide to buy seedlings, they're going to be about six inches tall. And when you transplant most other plants, like we've talked about trees and bushes, you never right. want to cover the crown. Mm -hmm. So always the top of that, you know, root ball or, or wherever the soil is on a plant, you want that even with the soil. Right. So tomato is the exception. So most pros recommend planting these seedlings deep. And they're actually going to develop new roots all along that buried stem for extra support, and it's going to draw more nutrients. Wow. So some pros are suggesting to bury it two-thirds of the plant underground, <laughs> even cover the first few leaves, and you're going to grow a much healthier tomato plant. How'd they figure that out? Yeah, interesting. So when removing from plastic pots, you want to be careful not to break the roots. Mm -hmm. So you want to support the whole ball with your hands and fingers, turn it upside down and kind of work it out. And then you can gently loosen the roots a little bit with your fingers before you plant it. Mm -hmm. You want to space these 24 to 36 inches apart because you want air and light circulation. It's going to be, have a healthier plant. Mm -hmm. If you're putting these in rows in a garden, you'd want four to five feet between each row. And then check your label. 
right. you want a little wider for larger plants. And in, in the area you're putting these in in your garden needs 8 to 12 hours worth of full sun a day <laughs> for the healthiest plants. If you are planting in an established garden, you don't want to dig up the soil. So you're just going to disrupt the worms, the microorganisms. You're going to turn up weed seeds. Hmm. So the pros are saying just add one or two inches of compost to the top of your soil every year in an established garden. That's and, interesting. And this compost is going to contain just a wide range of nutrients for soil health. Right. It's beneficial for the microorganisms. They're going to help break down nutrients for your plants. It's going to correct soil problems, regulate your soil temperature and moisture. But if you're just starting a garden, that's when you want to dig up the soil and blend six inches worth of compost into that. Wow. And this is going to loosen up the soil. So if you have a clay soil, mm -hmm. it's going to loosen it up, allow more water and air movement. And then if you have very sandy soil, it's going to add some body to it to hold moisture and nutrients. Hmm. Tomatoes need at least one inch worth of rain a week if they don't get that. And that's why it's nice to have a rain gauge if you have a garden. Right. So if you're not getting rain, you want to water them two or three times a week in hot weather. In cool weather, you want to water them once or twice a week. And you want to water the soil, not the leaves. You can actually spread some diseases hmm. if you're getting the leaves wet. You want to water deep. You want to allow this to soak in six to eight inches. So a soaker hose on a timer works really great, mm -hmm. and you can test the soil to know how long it takes to get you know six to eight inches deep. So you can take a screwdriver or a garden spade and you know dig it into the soil after a half an hour or an hour, and then see how long it takes. You can also use drip irrigation and rain barrels. Mm -hmm. So a couple of the top rated drip irrigation, DIG, Rain Drip, and Rain Bird. And then with rain barrels, they've got some really interesting new designs. Some of them look like just big decorative pots. Mm -hmm. And All Green, A-L-G-R-E-E-N, Good Ideas, and Build a Barrel were some of the top rated barrels. You should fertilize your tomatoes when you first put them in your garden, but make sure you're getting something that's for tomatoes. Unless mm -hmm. you're, you know, a lot of gardeners like bone meal or dried manure, worm casting, those, that's just a good overall fertilizer. Mm -hmm. But some fertilizers are very high in nitrogen, so great for like your lawn because right. it's for, you know, leaf growth. But with tomatoes, they need phosphorus and potassium to produce this fruit, so it's nice to get something that's geared for tomatoes. Mm -hmm. A slow release or granular fertilizer is real popular with a lot of gardeners. So you can fertilize for a month or two, depending on the formula, and, mm -hmm. and read the label. A lot of people call it side dressing. So you're just throwing this granules along the side of your plants, and it yeah. slowly breaks down. But there's a, a wide variety of formulas, so make sure you read the label. It tells you how often right. you should be applying it. What are some top-rated fertilizers? So you've got Alaska Fish Fertilizer, which is organic. And if you're looking for something that's certified organic, you're looking for the OMRI label mm -hmm. on there, and that's the Organic Materials Review Institute. Mm -hmm. You have Dave Thompson's Organic Healthy Grow Tomato Fertilizer. Wow, that's a mouthful. <laughs> this is organic. It has its nutrients and microbes in there to improve the soil health. Mm -hmm. Tomato Tone, so it's tomato-t-o-n-e, and this is part of Espoma. This is an organic fertilizer with microbes. Dr. Earth Homegrown is an organic fertilizer, and this has microbes, and it has the mycorrhiza fungus. Oh. So we talked about that before. It helps extend the roots oh, yeah. for more nutrients and, and moisture. And then Job's, J-O-B-E-S, they have tomato spikes that were rated very high. It's an mm -hmm. eight-week slow-release spike mm. that you just pound into the ground around your plants. Easy enough. So, <laughs> What about tomato cages? So you definitely should stake them or cage them when you plant your tomatoes. So you're going to get bigger fruit. You're going to have better air circulation. Mm -hmm. it, you know, the cage or, or stake, if you're using ties, it's going to support the fruit. And it makes it, it easier to pick too, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And the cages are really easy. So you're just going to set these over the plant. And if you get those cone-shaped, mm -hmm. you actually, so it, it, you're going to go from the narrow on the bottom up to the wide. Because mm -hmm. some people just set it you know, the wide part down right. because it's easy, but it's actually designed narrow on the bottom, wide on the top. The thicker the cages are, the better they are. You'd want a three feet minimum. Five foot is better. They also have these cages where they're three or four legs. Four legs are better. They're stronger. Mm -hmm. And you can get these circular, square, triangular. Mm -hmm. Once the plant's growing, you can just work the stems through the supports, and you don't really have to use wraps that much with a cage, although you can. 
Velcro has a really nice roll, so you can cut this to size. It comes half inch wide. It's very soft, kind of stretchy material, but then it sticks to itself, mm -hmm. and you can reposition it. So I really like those a lot. With stakes, you can just use a stake right next to your plant, and then you have to use plant ties or some way to affix it right. to it. Right. So it's a little more work, and sometimes you have to kind of cut the old ties off and, mm -hmm. and retie it. So cages, I think, are a little easier. To help protect your tomatoes against disease, you can buy disease-resistant plants. And then we talked about putting a layer of compost on your garden every season. Mm -hmm. And you want to cover the soil. So if you use compost, you can use leaf mold, you can use mulch. And this prevents spores. When you're watering, spores sometimes splash up mm -hmm. and touch the bottom of the leaves. And that's how they get some disease. Oh, really? Isn't that wild? So some pros are recommending that you actually prune the bottom leaves to prevent contact with soil. Hmm. And then just watch it throughout the season. Interesting. If you smoke or use tobacco products, you should wash your hands thoroughly because there's something called the tobacco mosaic virus, and this is passed to plants from human contact. So when you touch anything with a tobacco product, you can spread this. Really? And there's no cure once the plant's infected. <laughs> so you can buy resistant plants, and they're going to be marked with a T. Hmm. Penn State University did some research, and they found that the virus doesn't pass in smoke. So it's just the, the actual dried tobacco itself. Interesting. Aphids, hornworms, slugs, and stink bugs are probably some of the most common insect problems. And you can use beneficial insects like we talked about mm -hmm. and organic sprays to combat those. How do you know when it's time to pick your tomato? So there's a couple of times you can pick it just as it's starting to turn the color for their variety. So let's say you have a red or a yellow or a pink tomato. Or black or striped. <laughs> When it's going from green and you just start to see that color change, you can pick it. Or when it's fully the final color and there's no green left. Hmm. If it's just starting to change color and you pick it, it's still going to continue to ripen. Mm -hmm. So if you wrap this in newspaper, they found the tomato is actually going to ripen faster because it's giving off an ethylene gas. That's and, weird. It, and it gets trapped in the newspaper and it stimulates ripening. The best temperature is between 55 and 70 deg degrees and warmth is what helps it ripen, not sunlight. A lot of people think that if you put it on a windowsill, mm -hmm. but it's actually the warmth. And if it's too hot, so once it gets 85 degrees and warmer, so 85 Fahrenheit and warmer, it actually stops ripening. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a very hot area and you've got temperatures that are going to be above 85 for a long period, you can actually pick them. If it just started to change its color, pick them and allow them to ripen inside. And yeah. you won't lose any of the flavor either. That's interesting. To pick your tomatoes, you can just twist them till they mm -hmm. snap off the vine, or you can cut it off close to the fruit. If it's late in the season and there's a heavy frost coming, you'd want to get the tomatoes inside and allow them to ripen. And put them in newspaper. Do you have anything else to add? I would say to try a few varieties if you're just starting to grow tomatoes. Who knew there were so many different varieties? <laughs> get one from Transylvania. You can pick indeterminate for fruit all season, determinate for a small window if you're canning or mm -hmm. creating sauces. Get two to four plants per person, and then get disease resistant. just makes it easy. Mm -hmm. Put compost on top of your garden every season, and don't keep them in the fridge. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can download our book, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. And we are almost finished writing book number three. The excitement is palpable. <laughs> you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, and the Google Play Music mobile app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you